Hey guys, in this video series, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about just the basics of roots. In this first video, we're going to talk about square roots. So we're going to talk about situations that look like this. So for these videos, you want to pause the video and try the examples when you are prompted to. And there are free guided notes available, um, which can be very helpful um, just to so you can go back and review this at a later time. So to begin, let's talk about just what are the square roots of nine? So what does it actually mean to be a square root? So if you're thinking about this, maybe you want to pause the video and think about it. So, um, so the square roots would be three and negative three. So the question here is, so what does it actually mean to be a square root in case you don't know? Well, you're basically looking for what things can you multiply together two times, so something by itself, to get nine. So let me write that down. So in the case of three, um, we know that three times three, so that'll equal nine. And then negative three times negative three will also equal nine, right? Because the negative cancels out the negative. So that's what it means to be just general square roots. So maybe you just want to think about for a second, what would be the square roots of these two numbers, 25 and 36? So for 25, it would be five and negative five. And for 36, it would be six and negative six. Okay, so we have a little bit of an issue here um, because we do have two numbers, right? So we need some way to kind of clear up which one we want. And so that's where this symbol comes in. So this is the square root symbol. This symbol is referring to only the positive root. So that's what that, that will mean. It refers directly to the positive root, which then brings up the natural question. So how can we refer to get to the negative square root? Well, then what you would do is you would just put a negative in front of the square root symbol. That's how you get to the negative one. So like I said, this is called the square root symbol. Um, I just want to label a few things with this. So, so the thing under the square root, this is what's known as the radicand while the root symbol itself, so just this part, so this is my square root symbol, or my radical symbol. The entirety of this whole thing, so all of this, this whole thing is what's known as a radical. So those are really the pieces. Um, so radicand is actually kind of important to know, um, so sometimes I'll, I'll use that term, um, sometimes you'll see places use that term, so it's specifically just referring to the thing that you're putting under the root. Okay, so why don't you pause the video and try these. So for this first one, so square root of 25, so we already did that one, right? So this is actually just going to now refer to just positive 5, that's what the square root symbol means. And then for 81, so the square root of 81 is Nine, 9, sorry, and then the square root of 36, so again, we already kind of talked about that one, so that would just be 6. Now, just to mix it up a little bit, what about 1 over 36? So in this case, now, you can really just think about taking the square root of the top and the bottom together. So the square root of 1 is just 1, and then the square root of 36 is still 6, so this will just be 1, 6. Now, the other ones, um, so for E here, so the square root of 16 over 49. So the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 49 is 7. So this would just be 4 over 7. And then for f, so the square root of 9 is 3, and then we already know that the square root of 25 is 5. And now for these last two. So the square root of negative 36. So negative 36, so this is all under the radical, right? Um, all under the radical sign or the square root sign. Um, what two things can you multiply together to get a negative number? There is nothing you can multiply together to get a negative number. So this actually, for now, will say does not exist. So I will put a little star next to this. Um, some of you might know of imaginary numbers. I'm going to talk about that in a later lesson. Um, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Um, but th like this has a little bit of a star next to it. For now, just to keep this simple, we'll say this doesn't exist, and later on we're going to clarify this. Now for h, this is actually going to be negative 8. So this is kind of a big deal. If there's a negative under the square root, it doesn't exist, but the, if the negative is on the outside, then it does exist. 
So this can be a little bit of a trick of the eyes. So that is something that we are going to have to think about and just be careful about going forward. All right. So um, the last thing I want to talk about just in this video is what do you do when you have um, different square roots that maybe you can't actually evaluate? So pretend that we have something like the square root of 5. So what you want to do is consider the closest square roots that you can evaluate. So in this case, I'm thinking of the square root of 4 and then the square root of 9. So the square root of 5 is somewhere in between these, right? It falls in between. So this would mean then that the square root of 5 has to be somewhere between 2 and 3. So when you're estimating this, then you're just thinking, which do you think it's going to be closer to? Is it going to be closer to 2 or is it going to be closer to 3? It's probably going to be closer to 2, right? And then you can kind of just make some sort of estimate. So maybe the square root of 5, uh, I don't know. Why don't we say it's like somewhere around maybe 2.2. Two. So if I actually plug this into a calculator now, I will get that the square root of 5 is actually equal to 2.236 and so on. So I didn't do a bad job of estimating, right? So um, if you want to try one, uh, go ahead and do this one. So the square root of 14 and hit play when you're ready. So in this case, so the square root of 14 now is going to fall somewhere between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. So this is kind of where it's going to fall. So it's going to be somewhere between 3 and 4. So now if I had to make a guess, I'd probably say it's a little bit closer to 4. So I'm going to say that my square root of 14, my guess will be that it's somewhere around, how about uh, 3.8. So let's go ahead and plug it into a calculator. And I get that this is actually uh, 3.742 and so on. So I didn't do too bad, right? So this is a great way of just if you need a quick estimate, now you kind of know how to do it. Um, so that is kind of the basics of square roots. So if that's helpful, please like this video, comment, and share, and subscribe to this channel. In the next video, I'm going to talk about higher square roots. So this just kind of sets the, the pace for the, the next video. I'll see you guys in the next video then.